Sopa de coditos con pollo is basically the Mexican version of chicken noodle soup. It's hearty and home to bold flavors. Growing up, this soup was served very often because it is easy to make, delicious, a crowd pleaser, and very inexpensive. Welcome to my kitchen. My name is Rosana, and I want to invite you to subscribe, like this video, and also click the notification bell. To start, we need to make a flavorful broth that's going to cook our chicken. And I have two and a half pounds of chicken thighs and legs. These are skin on and bone in because, oh boy, we need the flavor from that bone. Season it with one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper to taste. Ooh, I love the smell of freshly cracked black peppercorns. It's so good. Now let's mix it to combine because we want to make sure the chicken is well coated allow those ingredients to get to know each other perfect now follow me to the stove this broth is not going to cook for a very long time so it is very important we add ingredients that are going to deepen and add a ton of flavor and browning the chicken is going to be essential because it's going to take all of these flavors to the next level place a large pot over medium to medium high heat and heat a couple of tablespoons of a smooth olive oil it is ready for the chicken. We want to get a nice golden brown color on both sides. Now don't overcrowd the pot. You can do it in batches if you need to. Look what I have here. Very handy, a screen splatter. I'm going to leave you the link to this one down in the description area in case you're interested. Okay, let's remove the chicken and it's ready. Ooh. Now pour in eight cups of water. And pour the remainder of the chicken into the pot. Oh, so good. Add in one head of garlic cut in half, half of a large white onion, four sprigs of mint or yerba buena, four sprigs of thyme, and half of a bunch of cilantro. Allow this to reach a boil and if needed, remove any of the scum that may rise to the surface. Now lower it to medium low heat, cover the pot, and allow the chicken to cook for about 20 to 25 minutes or until fully cooked. Meanwhile, let's take advantage of time and make the sauce. Starting with two Roma tomatoes. Roughly dice it. And into the blender it goes. Also roughly cut half of a red bell pepper. And I'm just gonna remove the seeds. Now do a quarter of a large white onion. Let's take a small break because the chicken is cooked. So let me just turn off the heat. Let's resume by adding half a teaspoon of whole black peppercorns, half a teaspoon of whole cumin, one teaspoon of dry Mexican oregano, one tablespoon of tomato paste, three peeled garlic cloves, and two cups of water. Now blend until it is completely smooth and broken down. Now set it to the side until needed. For this dish, you wanna use a variety of vegetables that you like, something that you're gonna enjoy. And make sure you cut them uniform in size, that way they cook evenly. In my case, I'll be using one zucchini, two carrots, one chayote, and one russet potato. Dice them into small bite-sized pieces. Next are the carrots. For the potato, I'm gonna leave the skin on for that fiber content, but if you wanna remove the skin, peel it. It's up to you. Before we head over to the stove, I wanna talk pasta. 
So in Mexico, this is the brand that's typically used. The bag even says Mexico's number one pasta. This is actually called coditos or elbows, but in reality, it's just macaroni pasta. And I'm using chickpea pasta because it has a good amount of protein and fiber, which I'm crazy about, and it helps with maintaining my glucose. But you can use whichever brand you prefer. Place a large pot over medium heat and heat a couple of tablespoons of oil. Now add eight ounces of the pasta of your choice. We need to saute until it is golden brown on all sides. You see this beautiful color? This is exactly what you want. Now remove it from the pot. And I'm gonna turn off the heat, that way it doesn't overheat. Fun fact, this step is wonderful because it adds a nutty deep flavor. On the same pot, place it over medium low heat and add a little bit more oil if needed, which I do. And cook the carrots first because they are tougher. You want to cook them for about three minutes. Time for the potato and chayote. And just cook them for about two minutes. While this is happening, we're gonna remove the chicken from the broth back there and stir this as needed. This is looking good. Okay, now pour in the blended sauce. Gonna stir. And also strain all of this beautiful broth into the larger pot. Crank up the heat to medium high and allow this to reach a boil. Then lower to medium low heat cover and let it cook for about 10 minutes or until the veggies are three quarters of the way cooked. Okay, let's take a look at this. Beautiful. Time to add the zucchini and the pasta, macaroni. and allow this to continue cooking for about five minutes or until the pasta is almost done to your desired doneness. And it is time to add the chicken. Now you can shred this, but I prefer to do whole pieces. It just depends on what you like. Cover again and allow it to cook for an additional three minutes. Okay, lastly season it with salt to taste and I'm gonna be doing two and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. Stir to combine. The veggies are done, perfectly cooked. The chicken is cooked. The pasta is cooked to my liking. This is ready to serve. This soup takes me back to my childhood, a humble and affordable dish, so delicious and comforting, perfect for any given day. After it's served, we like to top it with a generous dollop of Mexican or sour cream, avocado, a slice or two of pickled jalapenos along with a drizzle of the pickling juice, and add a few leaves of cilantro. It is time to taste, and as you can see, I have two plates. This is my victory entrance. Oh, what a victory entrance. <laughs> I would have run in here. <laughs> okay. Um, this mix. smells so good. It does. It just mix everything in. Okay, let's do let's this. Taste. Hmm. You know what we're missing? The rolled hot corn tortilla. Can't believe I missed it. But feel free to do it at home. So okay. good. I just have so many flashbacks with this dish. 
because we used to have it very often. My mom, if she didn't know what to cook that day or let's say we were on a budget, this right here was it and we all loved it. So good. This is a moment to be happy, rejoice, share the happiness and send somebody this wonderful recipe. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video, this recipe, you make it at home, come back and let us know how it went down in the comment area because we love to hear from yes, you. Yes, please. We do. <laughs> and also remember that you can follow us on all of our social media platforms. And I guess until the next one. Until the next one.